Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we gather here today as a church, one that is strong in your faith and in the belief that your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, is our Redeemer, our Savior. I ask today that you speak to our hearts and use me as a tool for your word so that we, as a congregation, can live like those who are wise and understand what the Lord wants us to do, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and sing psalms and hymns about you all the day through, like we're instructed in Ephesians 5. I ask that you bless this church so that we may go about our lives an inspired people and a loving people that uses our gifts and joy for good to create a loving, united world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 34. Uh, Specifically the New Living Translation. Around midnight, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All of the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of prisoner <laughs> and the chains of the pr- every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, "Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here." The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him, and with all who lived in his household. Even in that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone... Then he and everyone in his household were baptized, or immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced, because they all believed in God. For those unaware, music and performance has been one of the defining aspects of my career as a young adult. Uh, From performing both in our local church choir to the Marshall Community Chorus, to going to state music festival in my senior year of high school, to the numerous amount of plays that I performed in, I believe I did not miss one across my high school career. And they've always held a special place within my heart. So naturally, when the opportunity arose to write a sermon and present it to my congregation, I knew that I had to speak something that I was familiar with. Thankfully, music is something that I feel is generally understood. Well, you may not know all the theory, the tempos, the harmonies, what convervore is, or even what a magior is, there are things that we can all inherently understand. Music is the language of the soul. And I feel that's just what God does with us. We may not all have these dreams so vivid and hear God speak to us in, in our sleep. There are times that music is so strong, so powerful, so very natural that it can bring us to tears. It's something that resonates with you deeply, like holy words should, and a good performance is something that will always stay on the mind and will really cause you to think, really think, and delve deeper on what you believe and the implications that it has to your beliefs. In our scriptures today, we hear about the time that Paul and Silas were imprisoned during their time in the city of Philippi. Some translations claim that they sang while the other prisoners listened, while their translations claim that the prisoners sang along with them. It really just comes down to which re- version of the Bible you're reading. And just as you know it, this singing was followed by an earthquake that could not have been predicted, one so powerful that not only did it open all of the doors and unlock all of the prisoners, but based on the verse prior to this, we, we begin today... Uh, it would have unchained Paul and Silas from the very floors of the dungeon they were restrained to, as well as removed their other restraints. 
But miracles are only a part of the power of music. I've had many of my darkest moments relieved when I hear that one song that calls out to me and has brought me from what I felt to be a moment that wasn't possible to come back from. But that's not what I would speak on today. Let's give some context to the scripture. Paul and Silas were in the city of Philippi, a Roman colony, and the reason for their imprisonment while officially cited as causing an uproar as two Jews, despite publicly proclaiming themselves as Christians, was actually started because Paul had grown annoyed with a young girl or a young slave girl possessed by a demon and had exercised it from her, ruining her owner's hopes of wealth as he had intended to sell her more for more. Thus, the story was made, and these two men, who had done no wrong, were severely beaten, thrown into jail without any public trial in the slightest, and restrained even further than a normal prisoner was by having their feet clamped into the stocks. And yet, when these men were given the opportunity to leave, to head out of this place that would have been the worst shame you could have had as a Roman prisoner, they stayed behind and they sang. And not only that, all of the other prisoners stayed with them. They heard the songs that were being sung and they knew that where they were was a good place, a holy place. While they may not have understood in the moment why they stayed, they clearly understood what was being said and decided to stick around and see it out, despite this opportunity placed before them to escape. But the power of music doesn't end there. The scripture goes on to tell us of the jailer, this man who was responsible for the treatment of the two of the Lord's most loyal servants, and in a moment where he found it better to kill himself than to live through what had happened if the prisoners had escaped without him even checking to see if they were gone, Paul called out to him. Paul saved this man's life, not only from his own hands, but likely the hands of the Roman government as well. As the story goes on, we see this jailer, as well as his entire family, undergo this massive change. He, a Roman soldier, who was given no information as to who these two men were, or what they had done besides be two Jews that had caused an uproar in the city, approached them and asked how he, someone who had assisted in doing so much harm to them, whether directly or not, could be saved. And they told him. They gave him an honesty, in blunt terms that I feel difficult to misunderstand or misinterpret. Believe that Jesus Christ is our one and only Savior, and that he and his entire family would be saved if he believed that. And this man went through with it. He unrestrained them. And even with how late in the night it was, or early in the morning, and where he was in this dungeon of a prison, he tended to these two men. He treated their wounds. He took them to his home, to his family. He fed them and rejoiced in song, having his whole family baptized and saved, despite what the implications of such would have been within Roman society at the time. But something spoke to them, something that told them that it was all right to be outside the confines of society, that what they had done was correct, and that they had been saved for it. And to think, that singular chain of events, this whole chain of kindness, all started because the hymns of Paul and Silas affected the prisoners, and thus the jailer, and then even further to the jailer's family. So, so very impactful. And it wasn't just something that could have been said either. If Paul had just said something among the lines of, you know, I think it would be a great idea if we just, we didn't leave. You know, I think it would be a great idea if we just sat in our cells and just waited for this whole thing to be over. I have a slight feeling that maybe the prisoners who were in the most shame of their life probably would have just left without caring what they had to say. But this song, these, these hymns that they were singing, were so captivating, they kept every single prisoner inside of this pain, this place of shame and pain. It saved the lives of a jailer and his whole family, and very likely the lives of many of the prisoners who were there to witness the scene. All because of one song, so much good was done, in a time that rippled outwards in a way that spoken word could never hope to accomplish. It's no surprise that music has this impact either, uh, after all, in terms of chapters, there are 61 more chapters of Psalm than there is in the entirety of the four Gospels. And that's not even getting to the fact that there's also the book Song of Songs, 
which is an additional eight chapters worth of psalms and poems. With how many of those there are, I would find it difficult to believe that we could pick up the Bible and read all 150 books, songs of prayer found in psalms, and not find one that could speak to us in a way that is more beautiful, more poetic, and more true to the soul than the spoken word could hope to accomplish. Music is the language of the soul. It doesn't matter what your native tongue is, what the world may seem to be coming to. We've seen this with the Christmas truce of 1914, where for a full night on Christmas Eve, British, French, and German soldiers alike celebrated, singing silent nights, playing soccer, exchanging gifts. They celebrated and showed us how good the world could truly be in a, rel in a very hard time in this world's history. Or even with our military Bible sticks, which our church has funded significantly in the hopes that we can translate the Bible into 99% of the world's spoken languages so that everyone may be able to hear the word of God in their own native tongue. Even before the Bible tran was translated into other languages that most people could understand, we had seen and heard that people would still go to hear the Psalms read to them so that they could see this reflection of the goodness and beauty of God's presence, even in Latin. It may not be in a language our brains can understand, but our hearts, our hearts can, and they are often the thing that God works through us to lead us to what is right. They'll show us something that is so ornately beautiful that while we may never be able to hear it and understand it due to barriers of language, that just because of how beautiful it is, it can bring us tears, it can bring us hope and love and belief that everything is good in this world that seems so divided from one another in these days. There will always be someone or something that is there that can speak to you better than I ever will be able to, that you will read, hear, or sing, that will stick with you forever. And whether or not it's something you understand in that moment, you'll know that it's God speaking to you and telling you to rejoice and that he's been listening. It's my prayer to each of you here today in both mind as well as body, find that song, those beauties of the moments that will stick to you and inspire you to live in compassion and beauty that transcends the limitations of our minds and body that will stick to our hearts forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you to be with us today as we ready ourselves to leave this place, that you extend your mighty holy hands out unto us as a good and loving Father. Bless those who are with us today, both in body and spirit. And thank you, Lord, for giving an opportunity for us to gather here and give thanks to you. Father God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you bless us with the songs of your voice and inspire us as you have inspired so many before. We ask all of this in your heavenly name, so that not our will, but thine be done. Amen.